Today I'm going to be fishing some of my favourite bass waters from my 3 metre Polycraft Tough Tender. It's a great little boat to get into these secret little spots. In late 2010, early 2011, big floods made, you know, forced a lot of bass to get out of the dams. A lot of them vacated dams over spillways and got down into those streams below. But they weren't the only fish to move. They're also fish that punched up into that strong current and went right upstream. And today we're actually in the headwaters of, uh, well, let's just say, one of Brisbane's largest lakes. I'm not going to give too much away. Let's go get them. I'm going to try a couple of different lures this morning. Uh, first one's going to be this beetle spin. And I'm just going to take a soft plastic. In this case, it's just a power bait tea tail in the nine centimetre size. Just going to shorten that up. Bite a little bit off so he's a little bit shorter. So I've gone the bigger one because he's got a stronger tail action. I'm just going to thread that onto my hook now. And that stronger tail action will hopefully pull those bass out from all their little hidey holes. A lot of the bass here will be hiding in weed. They'll be hiding on snags. And we need to make a little bit of disturbance to let them know that we're there. So you'll see that's got quite a big paddle tail on it, that bait. Uh, we clip him on there onto the line and he's got this blade that spins above. It's a great lure to use around weed because when you do get weed on it, you can feel the pulsation of that blade. It'll actually stop so you know when you're weeded. Give it a rip and you can keep on fishing. So that's one lure that I'm going to use. Hard body lures have been quite effective here in this stream that I'm fishing. So I'm just going to show you exactly how I fish it. This is a Halco Scorpion in the 68. The water is crystal clear. So I've taken a natural colour. I like the naturals and the clears. This one's a quite natural. It's a brown. I don't want anything too out there. So nothing really bright or anything like that. Now the scorpions are a very high flotation lure. It's going to want to come to the surface. And I want to keep this lure down a little bit. And to aid in the casting and keeping it down, I'm just going to whack on some of these suspend strips. These are the storm, the storm suspend strips. You can also get pontoon 21 suspend dots. There's a few different products out there. They're just a lead weight with a sticky back and you pop that on the lure and it just give it the buoyancy that you want, basically. For starters, I'm going to go with about four strips, which won't actually make this lure suspend. It'll still be a slow floater, but it's not going to float really quickly back to the surface. It's just going to take its time coming back up. And because it's taking its time, it's going to be right in that zone. So any time you do do this, you can, you can upgrade hooks or you can put on these strips. Any time you do sort of do anything like this, just make sure that you're happy with the lure beside the boat. You don't want to alter its performance too much. You want it still tuned and swimming nice and straight. So there we go. It hasn't changed the look of that lure too much. It's just on that belly section there. So that lure should still track nice and straight. Just slow that float rate back down. So we're going to give that a go. great day today with these overcast conditions at the moment. Some clouds just rolled in. It's, it's already mid-morning. We haven't got up too early, but the water is crystal clear. So with that clear water and the overcast conditions, it's ideal to get those bass coming up nice and shallow. So what I'm looking for at the moment, just around these grassy weed edges, is a fish that's sitting there shallow, just waiting to ambush something. Quite often, it's going to be pouncing on that lure within the first four or five winds of their reel. Sometimes you don't even get that. So yeah. A bait cast is a good outfit to use because you can actually land your lure, click it into gear straight away, and you're fishing. And that strike could come at any time. I've just come across some green weed, a little yellow flower on it, right on the edges. That weed actually grows fingers out onto the water, and underneath it's all shaded, so the fish could actually be lying in underneath that weed. So I'm just going to pop a few casts on the edges of that. There he is. Got him. He came back for it. I missed a strike. He only, I think he's only a little fish. I missed the strike and he came, followed that all the way back. I was just cranking in fast for the next cast. He's just a little bass. Whoa, turning it on now. This is what we've come here for. I've only just made a lure change. I, I went from the dark brown lure and I've actually put a clear on. And uh, I love clear lures in clear water. They just go, go together so well. This fish is just hooked on the back hook. Look at that little Australian bass. Just nailed that scorpion. You can see the colour change, the clear lure. Just going to pop those hooks straight out of him. Not a big bass by impoundment standards, but for a wild fish, fish 
in this wild country, he's not a bad bass. And you can see he's got shoulders on him, he's in good condition, he's doing well. He's finding plenty of food in here. Note the colour of that fish. If you've seen bass before, a lot of them are silver. These things are black because they live so shallow. So I'm going to get this guy back, pop him back in, and we'll go for another one. We'll see if he's got a bigger mate here. Catch you later. <laughs> Sweet, let's get another one. Overhanging structure like this bottle brush on the bank is just prime bass hauling territory. On a sunny day, it throws shade over the water, especially this clear water, and bass are gonna just be drawn to that. So I'm gonna try and do a side arm cast. Back in underneath, close as I can get to that duckweed so I don't foul up. A little bit of a bloop bloop to call the fish over. Roll him back out. I may try another cast even a little bit tighter back in there on the next one. The edges have been very quiet. It's very sunny, the water's very clear. I think that maybe it's time for a change, so I'm going to head further up the system and get into the really skinny tight water, which is quite often where the fish will move, especially in the warmer months. They'll punch upstream and get up into the shade of the trees, around the snags. So I think that may possibly be the answer to catching fish today. It's been pretty tough going in this more open water. We're almost back at the launch site. Now you may think that uh, putting the boat in, coming down the hill was actually the easy part, but pulling it out is actually easier again. I'll show you how we do it. Believe it or not, we're still in the same system, but we've come further upstream. And there's a reason for that. In the warmer months, that's the way that bass will migrate. They'll head further up into the creeks. So, you know, whereas in winter they might be in the rivers, head up into the feeder creeks during the summer and that's often where you'll find them. And I love this overhanging stuff and all the snags that you're gonna come across in these sort of areas. So, what I'm gonna be doing here is pitching in casts, this little short cast right in tight on the snags. Just looking for any sort of overgrowing sort of stuff, especially if there's throwing shade on the water, there's even more chance that there's going to be a bass sitting right in amongst that shade. Just got a good spot coming up right here, so I'll start fishing it from here. Look, 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 look. There's one right there. Eat it, eat it. He's got it, he's got it. <laughs> How good was that? Right on the snag. I called that fish, I was just saying, as I work that lure across, geez, saying to myself, this is the sort of spot where you'll just see a fish just come out of nowhere. And right off this log that you can see there, this little tiny bass has just come out and nailed this. So while it's only a little fish, the fact that it's just so visual just makes it so exciting. Watching that fish come up, he looked at it, turned away without interest. I gave it another little twitch and just saw him dart back and he nailed it. And he's a stocky little fat fish only a bit over 30 centimetres. So the suspenders in the middle of the day are a good idea. Rather than having the lure float back up, just leave the lure suspend right there in their face. Even this one it slowly sinks. So it just stays in the fish's face. It gives them a chance to eat it if they miss it the first time. It's not going to float up away and you can just take your time, keep it in the zone. So there we go, a nice little bass from the tighter country. We've moved upstream and already that's paid off. Half a dozen casts right in tight on the structure and this little fella came out. Now I know there's some bigger ones here and that's what I'm going to be chasing. I want a big one like that. When you're fishing this tighter country, it pays to use a shorter rod. So I'm using a two to four kg six foot rod just to do those little flicky casts, especially when you get in tight around the trees. You don't want a long rod, it's going to get in the way. So two to four kgs, teamed up with this little bait cast reel, which is ideal for throwing light lures. It's one of the Revo MGXs. 10 pound braid on that, 
and a 14 pound leader just to give us a little bit of wear resistance around these snags if we do hook one of the bigger fish. As we venture into some of this tight country I'll actually show you some tricks on getting the lures right in there and getting them in deep where you want to be. We've just cleared the shallows and we've come into some of the deeper water and here I'll be looking for these overhanging trees and I'll be trying to punch casts into ridiculously tight spots getting right in underneath the branches. And to do that I'll use that side arm type of cast. You can either do a forehand or a backhand cast just to get you right in tight in underneath the overgrowth. If you're not in the shade, chances are you're not going to catch fish, especially in this country in the middle of the day. You want to be right up in underneath it. Yep. Oh, he wasn't a big fish, I don't think, but he's peeled some line. Looks a little bit like a yellow belly. Not sure yet. Oh, he's down in the weed. He's actually on a stick. Just going to keep pressure on. He's off. Looks like a nice little golden. So there we go, another species. The bass have been really tough today. And I uh, just grabbed a spin rod with a beetle spin on it that I rigged up earlier. And just flicked it just along this weed edge here. Rolled it slightly deeper and picked up a nice little golden. Cracking little fish. <laughs> Oh, come here, mate. Come here. He's still playing up. We've only got really light leader on this, so I've either got to grab him in the mouth or comfort him. I'll go for the second option. There we go. Check this fella out. Nice little golden. He's just, just caught in the lip with that hook. Power bait tea tail with that little spinning blade above it there for a little bit of flash. Hold it up out of the weed. And a 40 centimetre or so yellow belly. Nice little healthy fish. They're all such fat fish, so there's plenty of food here for them. Great to see another species living in here. Can't believe that. I wasn't expecting a yellow belly. I thought it was going to be a day just for bass. So that's a real bonus, that is. If we score a big bass, it'll be even better. the pause. Oh no! He's going hard and I was too and I pulled out of him. Oh, it was a good fish too. Look at that. That was a good fish. Just straightened the trebles. Just destroyed them. It's Bill Classen here from The Fishing Show and if you like this instructional video and want to learn more, it's simple. Go to fishingshowtv.com.au and see a whole host of additional videos.